right, good morning. It's the next day, and now that we got the uh, gearbox on, it's time to tackle the apron. And there's a few things I need to do to it first. Um, I need to cut some wicking to put down in all the holes to, uh, I reckon, slow the, the flow of the oil, because the oil, as you work the carriage, it works the pump, and then the pump pumps the oil up through this tube into the carriage, I mean, into the apron. I'm sorry, into the carriage. <laughs> the saddle, whatever, and then it goes into that distribution blocks, it goes through the waste, but it also dumps oil. That hole that I seen in the underside of the saddle was for this, uh, to let the oil come through here. And it had wicking in there, but it didn't have it here. But what I did is I have a, the right size wicking. I bought, you know, just a few feet, I think six feet of every length or every uh, diameter that they had. So I'm gonna cut a short piece and put it in here. That way, if I ever have to mess with it, um, which I don't think I'm ever going to. I think it'd be better to have it in here than into the other side of that. I don't see what the difference would be other than if there's not a good seal here, maybe it leaked down the front. Who knows? We'll see. If, it's, if that's the case, you know, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a good seal. But if it's not and I don't like the way the oil runs on it, we'll just put some black gasket on it, put it back up there, metal to metal black gasket. So I got plenty of that. And then I, I'm going to have to go back and watch some video and see if I'm able to put the rods in after the carriage is mounted. I, I mean, it might take some help. You know, those things are, what, eight, eight, at least eight feet long. They might be a little longer than that. But um, I don't want to tear nothing up, so I don't know. If, if I can't get them in, it's only four bolts that hold the thing on, so it wouldn't be that hard to take back off. But um, I really want to get this on, but I need to get the wicking cut and I left all the uh, adjustment screws loose for the half nut on this one down here. Um, I'll coat everything really good with whey oil um, and then uh, we'll stuff the wicking in here and then we'll move it over to the uh, lathe and put it on and then clean it up. Um, like It's been set and this has been rebuilt almost a year now I think. I look back and I think I've had the, this will be the second winter so it's been a two year project. Way too long way too long. I'm ready to get this thing, you know, wrapped up. It's been fun though. Not Definitely not going to deny that. Plus, we've done a lot of good things in the shop too. You know, we have two cranes, a 200 gallon parts washer, a big wash down booth, um, you know, a lot of things. Upgraded the sandblaster and all this stuff was because of the lathe. So, um, really happy I got it. So, brother's been a big help, but, you know, the gantry crane, we, we used it to, uh, to set the uh, the gearbox in place and the saddle, and this thing works like a champ. If you don't have one of these in shop, I highly recommend that you build one. Um, mine, I got like I said, I got it from Harbor Freight. It's that Fisher. I can't even remember the tonnage on it. Um, the chain was a little long. The uh, to that does the raising and the lowering was a little long. It was dragging the floor and picking up grit every time I noticed my hands were getting dirty and gritty, and I was like, what the heck? So. Um, Yesterday I cut, you know, about a foot and a half out of it, so it, it just dangles above the floor now. Much, much better. Cleaned the chain real good, re-lubricated it, we're good to go. But I would highly recommend this. And then if you, you know, the jib crane, the reason we put the jib crane was to have one almost like a gantry crane, but it's out of the way. You know, this one is in the way. <laughs> it's, you know, as, as, as convenient as it is, it takes up floor space. So, you know, every bit of your floor space it matters. If we could have built a jib crane that could have done everything we wanted with um, and do the weights that we wanted, we'd have definitely built one of those. But with me only having an eight foot ceiling height, it kind of limits me to how, how big of a I beam I can put on the top. So, you know, this one's only four inches tall. So, and it works great. The jib crane was designed to hold 200 foot, uh, 200 foot, 200 pounds at the tip. And um, we, you know, my brother hung on it and it it did exactly what the simulation in, in Fusion 360 said. It said it dropped half an inch and it dropped half an inch with him hanging on it. This one we haven't, you know, weight tested it. I don't see no need. I don't, you know, if we ever get to a piece of anything we're gonna stick on the lathe, we'll make dang sure, you know, we'll, we'll check it out then. But right now the, the heaviest thing it's been, you know, are these, you know, 100, 150, 200 pound lathe parts. So, but um, if you're on the fence about building one, I highly recommend it, you know. Like I said, uh, the, the link to the Fusion 360 drawing, if you want to build one like this, 
is um, in the description box underneath the crane part two, I believe. Gantry crane part two, but the list, the Fusion 360 files there. Um, it's done in parametric and expressions, so you can change the size of anything you need to change, and it'll it'll change that stuff for you. So if you want to build it out of two by two, build it out of two by two. It doesn't matter. Just run the simulation on it and see what weight it'll carry. All right. So let's go. Let's start on this. We'll. I'll probably reposition the camera um, first. Oh, let me show these uh, goldenrod cans. Got way oil for these, but um, when you're doing this stuff, man, it takes a lot of oil. So what I did was on one of our um, shopping trips, or uh, I should say Tennessee excursions. Let me get one of these right quick. We found these, <laughs> and these are simulated or re replica antique replica antique oil bottles. And uh, my wife happened to find these, and my last name's Huffman. And if you look right there, it's Huffman Oil Company. So we picked up four of them, and we keep all of the different lubricants that we use in the shop up on the shelf. So this one happens to have Vactor Whey Oil in it. That's what I use. So that's what we labeled it, but it makes filling the coin cans really easy. Um, pour it in there, put it on there, put it back on the shelf, and let it look pretty. So we got that. And then, so let's see what I see about the gantry crane. It, it's kind of in the way. Wouldn't have, wouldn't be without it now though. So these golden rod cans are good. I've been hunting and hunting. That daggone uh, Adam Booth has got me hunting those Eagle uh, brass Eagle oil cans. And man, I think he scarfed any, every one of them up in the Southeast because I can't find them every time I go to flea market or uh, antique store. And then we got, Remember those Wiccans I told you that we cut out for the gearbox? I soaked them in here, pre-soaked them. Oh yeah. So they've soaked up the oil nicely. So that's exactly what it's supposed to do. So now I don't have to worry about filling it up and letting the excess drain out because it's, it's just exactly what it's supposed to do. So we'll get those put in too. I don't know, I don't think I have the covers um, sandblasted and painted yet. So we might just leave these in the container. So yeah, they'll be all right in there. And I might do the same thing with the Wiccan. I might uh, cut the Wiccan and stick it all in, into uh, one of those jars and just let them soak in some oil before I stick them in the holes. Um, I don't know, we'll see. But anyway, let's get on to this. So we're gonna start cutting Wiccan and stick it all down in these little holes. And then we'll get this put onto the lathe, hopefully today. We'll see. Let me reposition the camera and we'll be right back. So these are the different sizes of wicking that I bought from McMaster Carr. Um, great felt wicking in a bunch of sizes. And we just went ahead and we just cut all the pieces that we could find the holes to stuff them in. And we just, you know, according to the diameter of the hole, we stuffed a piece of hose in there it's you know really nothing to it so with that we'll just speed the video up put on a little music and knock this out
And here we, you know, just took my oil can and squirted a bunch of oil in the in those where the wickings are at, trying to get them pre-soaked. As you work the carriage back and forward, you know that oil pump will pump oil up into that area. And then from here, we just took put it on, slung it on the chain fall, and moved it over to the lathe. And this is probably the most tricky part because it's the apron is pretty, you know, it's hard to sling up where you wanted to get it bolted onto the saddle. So what I decided to do was to just drop it in the pan. And the way that we took it out, I'm pretty sure we blocked it up when we took it out. So we just lowered it down a little bit, blocked it up. And then once we had it totally loose, you know, we lifted it up, put it on the cart. So I decided just to lower it into the pan and then try to figure out how I was going to do it. Um, of course, I tried to re-sling it a couple times and try to just lift it up with the, uh, with the, with the gantry crane. And um, that didn't work. So I, what I ended up doing was um, just going back to the wood shop and cutting up a bunch of blocking. And it was just a matter of, you know, cutting up two befores and, and some three-quarter plywood and then some quarter-inch plywood. And we just shimmed it up. You know, I the four by sixes were, were left over from when we brought the lathe here. But we use it for all kinds of, you know, blocking that we need. And there you can see I have everything blocked up. And I just started um, installing the bolts, um, of course, using anti-seas. And we left the crane hooked up just so we could pull it up a little tighter, get er keep everything aligned, and keep the daggone thing from falling over. It, You know, it's heavy. It's got a bunch of gears in it. It's cast iron. It's, it's not a light piece. One of the heavier pieces. I don't think it's quite as heavy as the gearbox, but it comes in a close second. And so we just, you know, got the, top, the two outside bolts started. Um, of course, lubed up well with anti seas. I don't know that it'll ever come apart in, through the years, but I wish they'd have done it 75 years ago. Of course, I can't say much. Um, we had no broken bolts that I can think of, and har very few, if any, hard bolts to get out. So I really can't say you know that it was hard to get apart because it really wasn't. But you can see everything. You know, it went together well. The hardest thing was getting it lined up. <clears throat> Excuse me. But once we got it lined up, or, you know, it just, it, it went right on. So, very pleased. The once, once the bolts were tightened, you know, I could let the pressure off of the gantry crane. Um, the two outside bolts were, are, are, are snugged up and then uh, let the pressure off. They still have the two inside bolts while the compound goes on. I'm sorry, the cross slide goes on. Hopefully. But um, it, it, it looked good. It fit well, um, went right in very few issues i mean if i don't think it took i don't know half an hour to get it installed i think the expression on my face says it all i was very pleased it would it moved very freely when we got the lathe <laughs> When we got the lay that didn't, you know, it wouldn't move at all. Of course, it had the broken woodruff key to keep it from going left and right. But even pushing on it and pulling on it, you know, we couldn't get it to budge. So, was very happy. And then here, I'm just putting whey oil into the uh, reservoir. I left it ep empty because I didn't, you know, if it fell over, it all leak out. But you can, it takes quite a bit of oil. It really surprised me. Um, but you can see it filling up in the, in the sight glass. So you just put oil in there, and as you work the carriage back and forth, it works an eccentric in the pump, and it oils the ways. And it keeps those ways old, and it keeps the cross slide ways old. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this video. I got the um, apron on. Um, it works extraordinarily well. So I'm very, very happy with this. I mean, like nobody's business. I took the line loose, double-checked that the oiler worked, and the oil's working fine. Um, probably going to take a little bit of back and forth to get the uh, oil to pump through all the lines. And remember, I've replaced all those metering valves, so I don't know exactly what the rate is for that. So, but it looks like it's putting oil out. Um, I don't see it coming out of the, for the cross slide yet. So, well, there might be a little bit. So it might be, it may be working. So, um, I can't see it coming out. So it's kind of hard to tell. It might be just such a low rate that you can't tell. Yeah, it's coming out. So, um, one step closer. So hopefully I didn't get ahead of myself and have to take stuff off. But um, it's looking really, really good. And 
I think that's going to do it for this video. So I think the next step is um, we'll try to get the rods in it and we'll do that. But I still, I need to clean up some parts and sandblast those and get them painted. And I'm sure you don't want to see that. So we'll probably do that off camera just to get ready. And I've got to watch some videos so I can remember how this thing came apart. Um, I've got pieces I don't exactly remember what they are. So hopefully um, they're either in my pictures or they're in the video. So we'll do that. But until next time, see ya.